This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. Good morning. I'm Pastor Brian Froggett, and together with Pastor Ann Fenlinson and the entire Trinity staff, we welcome you to worship at Trinity Lutheran Church in Long Lake, Minnesota. Also assisting with worship today is our music and worship director, uh, Mark Hemingway, who produces our online worship services. Uh, the music that you hear today will come from my wife, Kim Froggett, and myself, and it is our great pleasure to share it with you today. Just for kids today is Miss Julie and Miss Stacy, Julie Vogley, uh, children's ministry director here, and Stacy Thoma, our early childhood ministry uh, director. Uh, on video today is Carrie Bullimer, who is Trinity Women's um, Ministry Coordinator. On sound is Charlie Allen, and post-production is Kelsey Ahrens, who is our Trinity uh, office manager. Uh, today we celebrate Holy Communion, so I want to uh, give you a little notice ahead of time to uh, grab some wine and some bread or some grape juice and uh, bring that uh, to your tables, to in front of your, uh, your screens this morning. Uh, in preparation for Holy Communion. Also with us today uh, is from the Minneapolis area Synod is Bishop Ann Svenningson, who will be formalizing the conclusion of my call to ministry, uh, full-time ministry. And with us also is the representative from our congregation, Dr. Kathy Thunheim, who is Trinity's Council and Congregational President. Thanks to you, Bishop Ann, and also to you, Kathy, for your presence this day. To Pastor Ann and the entire Trinity staff, you guys rock. What a privilege it has been to work side by side with you in this precious work of the gospel these past years. Trinity, let me tell you, is in great hands with all of you. And to you people of Trinity, it has been nothing short of an incredible gift to serve as one of your pastors for these past eight and a half years. Both my wife Kim and I are so grateful for the kindness and the love that you have shown us and know that we will be holding you very, very close to our hearts in the days, months, and years to come, in fact, forever. And we know that Trinity will be going into a promising future, thanks to all of you. And now, called a worship song called, And Now My Life Song Sings. was lost but now I'm found I once was lost but now I'm found so far away but I'm home now I once was lost but now And now my life song sings I once was blind But now I see I once was blind But now I see I don't know how But when he touched me I once was blind, but now I see. And now my life song sings. And now my life song sings. And now my life song sings. 
I once was dead, but now I live. I once was dead, but now I live. Now my life to you I give. Now my life to you. author of Hebrews tells us is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. It is by faith that we are able to confess our sins before God and each other. It is by faith that we trust in God's love, mercy, and forgiveness. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we are not always people who live by faith. We know that we were created in your image. But we, but we treat, treat ourselves and each, each other in ways, ways that do not honor your presence within us. us. We, we know your laws and your commandments, but we choose to disobey you and to act in ways that harm our neighbors. We hear your call to reach out to those most in need, but instead we turn our backs on them and on you. Forgive us, O God, and help us day by day to become more faithful followers and the people you created us to be. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. What we have hoped for is true. What we cannot see has been made known. God's forgiveness is certain and sure. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, strengthen us to run the race that is before us, laying aside the heavy burdens of sin and death, and following the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Now for Paul, baptism is a powerful bond that unites people not only with God, but with other believers. Those who call themselves children of God experience a transformation that removes prejudices of race, social class, or gender in favor of true unity in Christ. Paul writes, Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we may be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. 
As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. I'll gather the kids around because it's just for kids' time, a special treat today because we have both Miss Julie and Miss Stacy with us. Our second reading for today comes to us from the book of Hebrews, the 11th and 12th chapter. The author of Hebrews presents us with rich stories of faith in this particular reading. In a long list of biblical heroes, we find examples of trust in God that enabled them to face incredible trials of life faithfully. In addition to this so-called cloud of witnesses, We have Jesus, the perfect model of faithful endurance. Again, from the book of Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab, the prostitute, did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, 
won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains in imprisonment. They were stoned to death, they were sawn in two, they were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. If that stone could speak, it would have said, Frogget, what in the world were you thinking? In Ireland, many long years ago, as you can tell from the picture in front of you, Kim and I saw these ancient standing stones in the middle of farmers' fields all over the place. They were rocks, really, some as high as nine or ten feet tall, set up by ancient people, some dating back as far as 3,000 years B.C. But many of them were Christian in origin. We stopped at one of those places in the county Sligo to take a picture of a set of these stones in a place called the Carol Keel Passage Tomb Cemetery. So anyways, I set up expertly, of course, this timer on our camera while Kim was already posing on top of one of the rocks about five feet up of these ancient gravestones, waiting for me to take a grand leap and land right next to her before the camera snapped that moment in time. If the stone could have talked, it would have said, are you nuts, Froggit? Don't even try. I pushed the timer button, ran like a little leprechaun, slipped on some moss, and went headfirst into that rock. No need to kiss the Blarney Stone for this guy. It was me who got it right in the kisser by this stone. And so that picture that you see up in front uh, of you uh, was the time when that timer went off. And it shows Kim on the standing stone. Uh, I think she's laughing, quite honestly. And I am in utter agony on my way down. I should have listened to what that stone said. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If only the stones could talk, imagine what they would say. I think about that whenever I am walking by or through a cemetery, whether a church cemetery or a city cemetery. If those gravestones could talk, what would they say? I'm sure you'd hear stories that would break your heart, but probably more stories that would encourage you in your own life, stories of faith and determination. Oh, if those stones could talk. The letter of Hebrews is not at all shy about lifting up examples of faith to encourage others 
in their spiritual journey, especially, especially when the going gets tough. And as you heard from that reading, there were some awful things that the people of faith met in those days. This particular book speaks to a congregation that's on the verge of abandoning its Christian heritage. It was a troubling time. And in this book, the author gives a few pieces of wisdom on moving forward that I think we all could use today, individually, but as congregations as well. First, listen to what the rocks of our faith have to say. Those who have gone before us in this faith. Remember them. Remember their witness. Remember what they went through. And remember how they could see through those difficult times because of faith, this trust in their God. Second, lay aside that which is dragging you down. And third, focus on the one who has gone before us all. Chapter 11 of Hebrews reads like a kind of a who's who list in the world of faith. The central focus is on the patriarchs of Israel and Moses, but then many other people kind of come into the seat, almost like a parade, brought in to fill out a, a full cast of witnesses throughout the ages. The verses today at the end of chapter 11 highlight the Exodus miracle and the miraculous conquest of Jericho, but then it speaks rather generally about the, the incredible hardships and trials that God's people have endured from age to age. People who have demonstrated overcoming faith against incredible odds. Faith that flourished under fire. Faith that knew how to hold on and to hold out. Faith that had nothing to do with themselves or their own deeds, but had everything to do with their faithful God. When common sense pronounced the situation hopeless, these people in the 11th chapter of Hebrews had the uncommon sense to see beyond the situation because of their faithful God. And then in Hebrews chapter 12, the author says these stunning words, thinking about all those people who have come before us Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, in the image of a race, a running race, the writer wants us to picture ourselves as athletes in the arena, running the race of life, like the Colosseum in Rome where the field is in the center and around the field are seats for all of the witnesses in the faith. In my home church of Vinji Lutheran in Wilmer, Minnesota, there's a round sanctuary that you worship in, and around the sanctuary, in big block wooden letters, are the words that you heard today from Hebrews chapter 12. So all the way around, you see, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And then over those big block letters, you see in gold the names of biblical characters from the Old Testament, from the New Testament, in the early church, leading all the way up to the 20th century when that church was built. And then there are two empty spaces and the church secretary there would always say, that's for you and for me. This cloud of witnesses that cheer all of us on in this race of life. Walking through the Trinity Memorial Garden, which is just outside this window, I get that sense of a cloud of witnesses. No doubt you have your own cloud of witnesses who've gone before you, that are cheering you on, especially in those times when you hit that proverbial wall. Think about those persons whose faith have impacted your life. There's more in this little reading today. If we want to finish the race, we have to remember not only who's around us cheering us on, 
but also to lay aside that which can weigh us down inside us. If we want to finish the race, we must remove the excess baggage that we carry. I mean, I've never seen any track stars run with heavy winter coats or with weights in their hands or in their shoes. Hebrews writes, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. I wonder what kind of weight each of us brings today, what you bring today. An unforgiving spirit, an unhealthy preoccupation, a grudge that's maybe so old that you maybe have forgotten what you were mad about in the first place. Worry, fear of the unknown, hurt. So what do we do with that excess baggage? Well, Hebrews tells us, we bring it to the cross of Jesus. And that brings me to one final thing. I'm told that the very best runners, I'm told that because I haven't done a lot of running in my life, unfortunately, but the very best runners have in their mind, not what they're going through, but what they're going to. And for you and me, it's a person. Hebrews reads, look to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set for, before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and who has taken his seat at the right hand of God. One of the earliest forms of the word translated as pioneer, it's archagos. It's a, it's a word that means many things. It can mean author. It can mean a trailblazer. It can mean scout, one who goes out in front. But in nautical terms, it was one who was a swimmer with a lifeline. So oftentimes what would happen with, with boats or ships before they landed shore, they met rocky shoals. And so they would send their best swimmer out, tied around his waist, a lifeline. And that person would swim to the shore, maneuvering through the rocks, and would, would take that lifeline and wrap it around a big tree or wrap it around a rock that was on the shore to help the ship make it through those dangerous waters. He was called an archagos, a swimmer with a lifeline. That's what Jesus is for you and me. And let me tell you, there's no doubt that these times, the waters are murky and stormy. COVID virus, social unrest, political polarization, hurricanes, wildfires, that added on to what's going on in your personal lives and in the lives of your family members. So many unknowns, so much murky water. But there is one known in all of this, folks. That Jesus, who is the pioneer, the lead swimmer with a lifeline, is in front of you with his lifeline and right beside you as you make your way through the storm to the solid shore. He is at the same time the goal of your journey and the companion on your way. He's at the same time the one who you go to meet and the one with whom you travel. Last week, I sat in the Trinity Memorial Garden, looking at all of those stones on the wall of the memorial wall and also the columbarium that Trinity has there and the names that are etched into those stones. Just some of those who have run the race of faith before us, this little cloud of witnesses here at Trinity. People like Herb and Diane and Jan and Ryan, and Dean, and Mabel, and Cal, and Karen, and Ray, and Muriel, Bob, and Jake, and so many more. Oh, if those stones could talk, I thought to myself. And then one did, speaking for all the other stones. The very top stone on the memorial wall reads, I am the resurrection 
and the life. That stone said to me that goodbyes are never final in this faith that believes in the one who spoke those very words, Jesus. Goodbye in the Christian faith is always see you later. It's always until we meet again. And oh, what a great and glorious day that will be. Amen. And may the grace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Mark Schultz has written a song called Remember Me. It's got kind of a double meaning. Um, it reflects, I think, uh, the relationship, the, the connections that we have together with people uh, of the church, no matter where that church may be. But it's also a, a message, I think, from Jesus himself. It's called Remember Me. Remember me Age to age and heart to heart 
child of wonder, child of God. Remember me, age to age and heart to heart, child of wonder, child. Let us confess together our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Gracious God, we are thankful for the great cloud of witnesses that surrounds us. Keep your church faithful to you so that your people here stand in witness to proclaim how much you have done for us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Break the bonds of captivity and injustice. Work in leaders and nations to bring peace and to advocate for the least of these. Heal Jacob Blake and keep us faithful in working toward justice and peace. Strengthen and sustain the work of Bishop Anne and the staff of the Minneapolis Area Synod. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Comfort all who grieve, including Mark and Pam Palm and family as they mourn the death of Mark's father, Reuben Palm. Bring strength to those who are suffering in the face of Hurricane Laura, the wildfires in California, and COVID-19. Heal the sick, including Liz, Tim, David, those in our ongoing prayers, and those we bring before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We give thanks, O God, for Pastor Brian and Kim, for their years in ministry, for their incredible gifts of music, and for their faithfulness and steadfastness in showing the light of Christ to all. Bless them as they go forward now into retirement and energize and enliven them for this new chapter of their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. prayer. Grant the people of Trinity guidance, wisdom, and grace as they go into this time of pastoral transition. Bolster their faith at every turn and keep them always looking for where you are at work in their lives and in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. In the sure and certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So at this time, if you haven't already, uh, get your communion elements uh, ready for communion as we will receive this. You'll take this after we say together the Lord's Prayer. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. name. Your Your kingdom kingdom come. come. Your Your will will be done done on earth as as in heaven. heaven. Give us us today today our daily bread. bread. Forgive Forgive us us our sins as we forgive forgive those who sin against us. Save us from from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now Now and and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Receive now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Taste and see that it is good. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you forever in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. If you're looking for more information about who we are here at Trinity Lutheran Long Lake, be sure to check our website at trinitylonglake.org and click on the Trinity Connect page once you're there. That will take you to a host of information, of informational things about who we are, what we're doing and how you can participate. And if you haven't already, please do check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Trinity Long Lake. We continue also to give thanks for your financial gifts to Trinity. To find out how you may give, you may follow the link that you see uh, at the bottom of the screen and know that we are so very grateful for your continued support of the ministries here at Trinity Lutheran Long Lake. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And also also with you. Please share a sign of peace with those around you. Peace Peace be be with with you. you. Peace be with you. (laughs) It is our tradition in our Lutheran church to recognize monumental milestones in people's lives. And today we're recognizing Brian, Pastor Brian's retirement after 35 years of ministry, eight years here at Trinity Lutheran. With us today uh, are Kathy Thunheim, our council president, and the bishop of the Minneapolis Area Synod, Ann Svenningson. I'm honored to be here this morning to thank you, Pastor Brian Froggett, for your 31 years of pastoral ministry. And I thank you on behalf of the Minneapolis Area Synod, the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, and of course, Trinity Lutheran Church. It's hard to put into words what a good pastor can mean in our lives. Aside from family and a few close friends, there's probably no other adult who plays such a role in our lives who walks with us in our greatest joys and our deepest sorrows, who brings God's word to us week in and week out, a word that guides our lives of discipleship, and even more importantly, a word that is unique in bringing new life and new hope through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And a pastor is also one who leads a community, a unique community that can become like a second family to us, brothers, sisters, siblings in Christ. And when someone does this like Brian has with such faith and wisdom, integrity and incredible talent, joy and love, we and indeed the world around us are truly blessed. Peter Drucker, the famous leadership consultant, once said that the two most difficult organizations to lead are large congregations and the small church college. Well, Brian has done that wonderfully well, both here and at Our Saviors in East Bethel. We are so very thankful. 
And just as we offer thanks to Brian, I want to say thanks to Kim. You have such incredible gifts, which you so generously share with God's church. I remember <laughs> being in New Orleans for the ELCA Youth Gathering, and there you were, sitting on a park bench, playing trombone with a pickup ensemble. I don't even know if you knew these people, but you were there playing. <laughs> or hearing you provide music for Central Lutheran's anniversary gala celebration. You just share those gifts, and we have been blessed today by your music. I know it can be both a blessing and sometimes a challenge to be the spouse of a pastor, to walk with them in this calling. So we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And may God bless you also in this time of transition. So now, on behalf of the whole church, from the depths of our hearts, we thank you, Pastor Brian, for your faithful ministry, and we pray for God's rich blessings on you in this next chapter of your baptismal journey. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop Spenningson. Brian Froggett, on May 15, 2012, we of Trinity Lutheran Long Lake called you to be pastor in this place to proclaim God's word, to baptize and teach, to announce God's forgiveness and to preside at the Lord's table. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times of sickness and trouble and at the death of our loved ones. Sharing our joys and sorrows, you and Kim have been important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ, in our service to this community and in God's mission to the whole world. As you leave this community of faith, we say farewell and we pray for God's blessing. As the people of God at Trinity Long Lake, we release Brian Froggett from service as our pastor, and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. Brian, do you recognize and accept the completion of your ministry with Trinity Lutheran Long Lake? I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with abilities that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Pastor Brian Froggett among the people of God in this place. You watch over our going out and our coming in. Bless this time of ending and beginning. You surround your people in every time and place. Keep us close in your love. You accompany your people in times of joy and times of trial. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. Help Brian and Kim and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future you give to us. As they have been a blessing to us, so now send them forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Your sisters and brothers in the Minneapolis area synod and the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America give thanks to God for the ministry you have shared, as we also promise you our continued support and prayer. And now rejoicing in the blessings of God in this congregation and in the ministry of Pastor Brian Froggett, with hope in God's abundant grace in years to come, I announce now that Brian Froggett's service as senior pastor in this congregation is now concluded. Well, I had the privilege of serving on the call committee uh, that uh, brought uh, Brian and Kim to Trinity from East Bethel. And I will never forget, as the call committee met in church, 
Uh, this group was chaired by Ken Jensen. We all felt like we were getting a twofer. That we, and we, we have. You have been such an amazing team for our, our church, and we ha are just so grateful. If I could speak to you individually for a minute, um, Brian, you have been an outstanding leader for our congregation. Your gifts of preaching and teaching and pastoral care and ministry and humor are going to be missed immensely. We reluctantly let you go, but we will support you and encourage you. Kim, your gifts of singing and piano playing and trombone and guitar and name every other instrument that she has shared with us. Your direction of the small uh, children's choir. I have done that job, that's a hard job. Bless you, thank you for doing that uh, for us at Trinity and really administration of um, our contemporary service, which was a dream and a part of our strategic plan for a long time. So thank you, we will miss you dearly too. So we will um, pray for you um, as time goes by. We're grateful that you're not uh, moving far away, but we understand that you cannot come back and worship here. We need to respect that uh, during our interim pastor time and as we call a new senior pastor. In terms of uh, gifts from the congregation, there are two things we would like to send with you as we go, uh, as we see you off. The first is from, a, it's an art piece from a local artist, uh, a local Orono mom, Ellie Ludke. You've probably seen um, her work already in the library. We have this beautiful heart um, that we would like to send with you for you to put in your home. And you have given us your hearts for eight and a half years here. Hearts, minds, souls, time, um, and so we hope every time you look at that, you will think of us here um, as we, you know, continue on, right, with faith and um, trust in God and in the process here that we will, um, Trinity will be okay without you. It will be different, but it will be new, and we will innovate and co-create new beginnings. Um, many other people have asked if they could give you some financial gifts, and so uh, we will be doing that too tonight through the drive-through ministry, uh, drive-through goodbye, and on Sunday, uh, we have a, a box that people, excuse me, can put cards and gifts and cash in, and we're kind of hoping and dreaming that you might want to take a trip to Norway, because that's a very special <laughs> place to this couple. Brian studied there uh, in Norway as a ninth grade young man, boy, right? And I think Kim has been there but I don't think that Brian and Kim have been there together. So we were, are gonna encourage that gift since we know as a Norwegian American, we heard lots of many stories um, of your Norsk and your family traditions that we would love to honor. So with that, thank you from the bottom of our hearts and God bless you and Godspeed. Thank you. Receive now the blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We close our worship this day uh, with a song called Hallelujah, which in the Hebrew means praise the Lord. And that's a great way to end. The tune is from the familiar song by Leonard Cohen, and, uh, and the actual lyrics today are written by mostly Kim Froggett. Uh, we've, we've always talked about how I'm the lyricist and she's the, the uh, composer of the music, uh, but she is taking over that lyricist job very, very well, and I think I added one thing in here, um, but this, this is an expression of uh, of how we are all connected together and and I pray that you know that we remain that you remain in our hearts very close to our hearts and this uh, we'd like to also dedicate this to uh, a small group of family members and dear friends who are here today in our studio audience uh, and want to thank them for this very big surprise and so now the song hallelujah We all are 
are gathered in this place to see each other face to face and share the love of Christ throughout the land. Together we have served the Lord through hands and feet God's love our board into a world that needs a helping hand. Join us in singing hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. May God bless our ministries, our children, youth, and families. The young and old who need his tender care. May God protect you day and night and keep you in his holy light and guide you all the days of your life. God bless you now and hope you see that you have made a difference in our lives. You all will live within our hearts and even though it's time to part, we celebrate the love that never dies. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Whether we live close by or we're far away, the time has come for us to say farewell to the Froggets Trinity Stay. You know you've comforted and you've praised and you've calmed many a fear. And now it's time for us to say goodbye. There's no delay. So farewell, Froggets. But just remember this, you're always, always in our hearts to stay. Farewell, Froggets. Farewell. Strong, we know your time is.
is done and we will miss the fun and all the music, smiles and love from way back when. So, golly gee, froggets, you'll have your Sundays free, froggets, know you're always in our hearts, we said you'll never go away, froggets are always in our hearts to stay.